flavor caught in the closed fist of the bean, freed then by the grinding mills in an endless cascade, brewed into a beverage that is consumed in the hundreds of millions of cupfuls each day. In this beverage that has become so much a part of our lives, there is a background, a tradition that reaches deeply into the culture of many lands. It's beginning under warm tropical sun, the care and attention to which it is treated during its journey from tree to cup. The many processes it must undergo are all devoted to creating good coffee with its secrets of aroma and body and taste to which the talents of millions of men are devoted during their lifetime. To which tradition, rich in the lore of centuries and faraway places, sets its fine hand to bring these three elements into precise flavor. The tastes of fine coffee extend over a wide range. But for each palate, there is a flavor that is just right. Around the world, they drink this beverage in its many exotic forms. A dream of Paris expressed in cafe au lait, a continental favorite, half coffee and half hot milk. Canals of Venice and the romance of cappuccino, like cafe au lait, but topped with whipped cream and a sprinkle of grated orange peel. The music of old Vienna in a cup. Viennese coffee, often spiced, but always with a drift of whipped cream. History of Istanbul and the Eastern lands in Turkish coffee, foam hiding the rich sweet brew. The vigor of Latin American coffees, dark and zesty, served black in tiny cups with plenty of sugar. But always it is coffee. How then do we make the perfect cup of coffee to our taste? Success lies in a single word, care. Three simple ingredients go into the brewing process. Water, coffee, time. Care will produce a perfect result every time. The beginning is the coffee pot, and there are as many varieties and types as taste will dictate. Yet, each 
is intended to do the same thing in a different way, to produce perfection in a coffee cup. To make a good cup of coffee, your coffee maker must be clean, free from all remembrances of that last pot of coffee, ready to begin its work anew, fresh and really clean. Water. Into a hundred thousand pots an hour, water flows in the coffee making process. Water. Too much or too little? Boiled first, or later, or not at all. For how long? And yet, there is only one correct way. Water, the first element, carefully measured, clean and cold. Three quarters of a measuring cup for each cup of coffee, then brought to a full boil. Coffee, fresh. And again, questions. What grind? Percolator, drip, or fine? How much? Coffee, the second element. Your favorite blend, the proper grind for your coffee maker, one level CBI measure per cup. This, found in many homes, is the same as this, a Coffee Brewing Institute approved measure. So whether you use one or the other, the measurement will be the same and it will be accurate. now passes over the coffee and the brewing process begins. The flame is lowered and, well, watch. The third element is time and it too must be measured accurately. The minutes counted. The flavor will emerge as the process continues. The taste of coffee heightens and increases until all that is good has been extracted. In this method of brewing, percolator, six to eight minutes over gentle heat, and then the liquid is coffee. From these grounds, there remains nothing more to gain but bitterness. No amount of cooking can extract another ounce of good taste, not another iota of good flavor. In the drip method, the coffee is measured and placed in the pot. The water, carefully pre-measured and brought to a full boil, is poured, still boiling, over the coffee. The time? It should take only four to six minutes. In the vacuum method, the coffee is carefully measured into the top bowl. The water is brought to a full boil before the brewing process is allowed to begin. The time, not more than three minutes after the water and coffee are in contact.
Like all good secrets, its simplicity is its magic. of coffee has now been captured in a cup. It has substance, a body to go with its aroma and its taste. When prepared this way, it will be perfect every time. Three magic ingredients. Water, fresh and carefully measured. Coffee, the proper grind, and carefully measured. Time, carefully measured. A simple recipe for perfect coffee. Perfect coffee, sending its glow into our lives around the clock. It helps us start the day with warmth and vigor. and spur to the morning's work. It provides the essential part of our pause at noon, indispensable during that unhurried hour in a world that often forgets to stop. In the romance of evening, when young dreams glow softly, coffee is always a perfect companion. And after dinner, it is at home in any setting when good taste is important. In the end, it remains a simple thing, easy to attain, well made and well enjoyed. A good cup of good coffee. We Americans know what we like, and we really do like coffee. Did I say like? Well, we use more than three billion pounds of coffee every year. Where does it all come from? Mostly from South America. So let's fly down and get the story firsthand. There's a typical plantation now. Many of the remote villages depend upon the plantations for their existence. Life is pretty much the same as it has been for generations. Today, of course, each village has its own schoolhouse, and the standard of living is immeasurably higher with increased knowledge. Naturally, the education of its youngsters includes learning all about coffee at an early age. They learn that coffee begins with a little plant or tree. These trees thrive best in rich red soil. When transplanted from the nursery, they're about two years old. Set in shallow holes, eight to 14 feet apart, the tree must grow for another two or three years before bearing its first crop. Brazil alone has more than a million square miles of coffee country, an area larger than all the United States east of the Mississippi. This is a coffee blossom, 
eight to nine months after this blooming, the coffee fruit ripens and looks very much like a cherry. Picked by skilled workers who know just when the ripe berry should be plucked, the average tree bears enough coffee beans to make about one pound of roasted coffee a year. Each plantation has its assembly points, where the day's pick is brought in to be weighed and bagged. This is just one step in more than 24 major operations required in bringing your cup of coffee to the table. The berries must go through a crushing and washing process which takes place on the plantation. Crushing removes the protective red covering with which nature has enclosed each coffee bean. Then they are washed. The beans float while skin or pulp sinks to the bottom. Providing adequate water facilities on a tropical plantation is a necessary and costly requisite in producing high quality coffee. Now encased only in its final hull or parchment, the coffee beans are spread out to dry in the sun. This takes from eight to 10 days. Men must rake and turn the beans so that they all will dry evenly. Then, packed in bags, the dried green coffee is ready to be sent into the city. Here, it is unloaded at a warehouse, where it will be inspected, sorted, and graded for quality. This initial grading is one of the most important operations in the selection of coffee. Today, mechanical methods are so perfected that coffee is sorted by machines with great precision. Each bag, after it is stamped with its country of origin, name, grade, and destination, is ready to go to the seaport, where final tests are made before shipment to the United States. Using an instrument like an apple corer, a checker stabs each bag and withdraws a sample for testing. The A&P has its own coffee experts right on the spot to test and grade the contents of each bag to see that it meets the company's quality standards. Samples are flown to the United States together with the experts' appraisals of grade and value.
Testing also includes roasting samples of the green coffee and actually taste testing it for strength and flavor. Today, many of the great cities of Latin America have been built largely upon the business of exporting coffee, which is one of their most valuable commodities. The people are modern, up-to-date, and eager to trade with their good neighbors to the north. When the coffee crop is good, business is good, for coffee means the same to these people and their ability to buy the things they need as wheat to a farmer in Nebraska or corn to Iowa and Kansas. While its miles of beautiful beaches and modern cities lure thousands of people to Latin America, nothing intrigues the tourist more than a visit to the waterfront to watch the ships loading coffee for shipment to the United States. Now a cargo of coffee is loaded aboard ship with the same care you'd use in storing food in your home. You know, some foods must be kept dry. A sudden drop in temperature upon leaving the tropics could cause dampness in the ship's hold. This moisture could injure the coffee unless the beans are carefully stowed. So loading a cargo of coffee is also an important operation in getting this beverage on its way to you. New York, New Orleans, and San Francisco are the principal ports through which coffee arrives in the United States. Here, licensed graders spear each bag for fresh samples and taste test the shipment to make certain the coffee they've bought compares with the reports and samples from South America. Based upon the findings of these experts, one coffee is mixed in the blending machine with another to produce the bouquet, the aroma, the flavor desired. From blending machines, the green coffee is introduced next to huge automatically controlled roasting ovens hundreds of pounds at a time. Done to a turn, cascades of precisely roasted beans are released at just the right moment, ready to be freshly sealed into packages the very same day. In this way, you know the coffee you buy is fresh and ready to be custom ground just right for the way you make coffee. Yes, we North Americans really do like coffee. We drink around 120 billion cups a year. After all, drinking coffee is one of life's pleasures, a pleasure that cannot be duplicated by any other beverage.
sir. Thanks, beautiful. You're welcome. How can such a pretty wife make such bad coffee? I heard that. Judy, what brings you over? Oh, Mrs. Olson, Frank crabbed about my coffee again. Oh, is coffee a problem? Sure is. I can't make good coffee. Good coffee's no problem. If you use the coffee with better flavor. Folgers. Folgers coffee? Yeah. Folgers is different. They blend it special. And Folgers is mountain grown coffee. Mountain grown? That's the richest kind. You try it. Your coffee, sir. Oh, thanks, honey. You're welcome. It's great, honey. How can such a pretty wife make such great coffee? I heard that. Try Folgers, the mountain-grown coffee. Mountain-grown for better flavor. <laughs> like to have one, Mrs. Olson? Oh, Arthur, I'd love one. You can take Arthur, too, while you're at it. He's always barking about my coffee. Now, honey, all I said was... I don't make good coffee. No, no, no. Mrs. Olson. Oh, I'm afraid he's right. Oh, dear, good coffee's no problem. If you use a coffee with better flavor. Here, now you try Folgers. It's like I've tried them all. Huh? Folgers is different. It's mountain grown coffee. Mountain grown? Yeah, that's the best coffee. The richest kind. Especially the way Folgers blends it. Honey, why don't you try it? Okay, right now. You know, this Folgers really is great coffee. Really like it? Honey, Folgers is this man's best friend. <laughs> try Folgers. The mountain-grown coffee. Mountain-grown for better flavor. Darling, it's our anniversary. Why so glum? Nothing. Well, it's your coffee. Again? Even today? Honey, your coffee just doesn't taste any good. Mr. McGregor? What's wrong, Jeannie? My coffee, it just isn't any good. And on my anniversary, too. Well, I think you should try new Instant Folgers. Instant Folgers? No, I said new Instant Folgers. Today's Instant Folgers tastes good as fresh pert because it's made from fresh pert coffee. Then that fresh perch coffee is turned into new instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh perch because it is. Fresh perch. Right. Mr. McGregor, I'll try it. Good. Wonderful anniversary, darling, in every way. Even the coffee. It's new instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh <laughs> perch. I like it better. New instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh perch because it is. Now, here's the captain getting aboard our yacht, Miss Olson. Oh, this must have been such a nice vacation. <laughs> Did you ever see Larry looking so happy? Oh, well, honey, happiness is a vacation. <laughs> Away from your coffee. Larry. Oh, Mrs. Olson, he, he's always ranting about my coffee. But I guess it really isn't any good. Oh, now, now, good coffee's no problem. All you need is a coffee with better flavor. Folgers. Folgers coffee? Yeah. Folgers is different. It's mountain-grown coffee. Is mountain-grown better? It's the richest kind. And Folgers blends it special. Make some now. Okay. Hope it quiets the shutter bug. <laughs> Honey, this Folgers coffee is great. Mm, want another cup? You bet. Happiness is another cup of your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Try Folgers, the mountain-grown coffee. Mountain-grown for better flavor. Forget the coffee, Marge. It's never very good. But Phil, I... I'll get some at the plant. Mr. McGregor, please. Why the big sad eyes, Margie? Phil would rather drink cafeteria coffee than mine. Then I have just the thing. New Instant Folgers. What do you mean, new Instant Folgers? Oh, it's plenty new. New Instant Folgers taste good as fresh perked, because that's how they make it. From fresh perked coffee? From fresh perked coffee. Then zip, it's turned into granules of new instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh perked because it is fresh perked. Here, you just try it. Mr. McGregor, I will. Say now. Like it? That's great. It's new instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh perked. Honey, I like it better. 
tastes good as fresh perked because it is. Oh, this coffee is criminal. Honey, you killed the petunias. Then you admit it. Your coffee really is murder. Papa Eddie, my coffee, it's murder. It's either too bitter or too weak. Try Folgers. Never bitter, never weak, always nice and rich. Because Folgers coffee is mountain grown. Mountain grown? Like the sign says, mountain grown for richer flavor. Mountains is where the best coffee comes from. Well, all right. You know, it's a crime not to have delicious coffee like this all the time. We will, now that I've discovered the mountains. Ooh. Folgers Coffee, mountain grown for richer flavor. Come on in, Mrs. Olson. Welcome to feeding time at the zoo. Oh, my. Well, they certainly seem to like everything, Mary. Thank goodness they're not like their father. He's always griping about my coffee. Well, admit it, honey. Your coffee is pretty bad. Oh, maybe he's right, Mrs. Olson. For the life of me, I can't seem to make good coffee. Good coffee's no problem. Just use a coffee with better flavor. Folgers. Folgers coffee? Yeah, Folgers is different. It's mountain-grown coffee. Mountain-grown? That's the richest kind. And Folgers blends it special. Make some tonight. Hope Herb likes it. Honey, this coffee tastes terrific. It's Folgers. Really like it? Now you've got me eating out of your hand. Try Folgers, the mountain-grown coffee. Mountain-grown for better flavor. Attention, ladies, please. Right now, at the end of aisle two, I've set out a brand new, can't-miss, husband-pleasing coffee. Mr. McGregor, a new coffee? But, but you always recommend Instant Folgers. I used to recommend Instant Folgers. You do? But now, I recommend new Instant Folgers. Instant Folgers is new? Sure is. New Instant Folgers taste good as fresh perked, because it is fresh perked. Look here. Folgers starts with fresh perked coffee. Then they turn this percolated coffee into new Instant Folgers. Every cup tastes good as fresh perked. Because it is fresh perked. Oh, I like it better. Remember, Instant Folgers is brand new. Oh, Mrs. Brown, the way your husband likes good coffee, you better take two. Try new Instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh perked because it is fresh perked. Oh, no. What's wrong? Oh, it's your coffee again. The desk sergeant at the station makes better coffee than this. Ed, really? Sorry, honey. But your coffee tastes terrible. Mr. McGregor, please help me. Carol, what's the matter? My coffee. Ed says he gets better coffee at the police station. Why not try new Instant Folgers? Instant Folgers? No, I said new Instant Folgers, Carol. Tastes good as fresh perked, because it's made from fresh perked coffee. Then they actually turn that fresh perked coffee into new instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh perked because it is fresh perked. Mr. McGregor, I'll try it. Hey, the Sarge never made coffee like this. It's new instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh perked. I like it better. Try new instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh perked because it is. Oh, there you are. Hi, Mrs. Olsen. Hi. I hope you and Tom are enjoying meeting all your new neighbors, Diane. Oh, we are. Oh, I'm so glad. You made us feel so at home. Everything's wonderful. Even the coffee's better. Here. You mean better than you get at home. I know. Well, what's the matter with your coffee, Diane? Wish I knew. I just can't seem to make good coffee. Oh, good coffee is no problem. If you use a coffee with better flavor. Fulgers. Folgers coffee? Yeah, Folgers is different. They blend it special. And you see, Diane, Folgers is mountain-grown coffee. Is mountain-grown any better? That's the richest kind. You try it. Okay. Say, 
This is really a good cup of coffee. Like it? It's Bolger's. It's as good as Mrs. Olson's. Try Folgers, the mountain-grown coffee. Mountain-grown for better flavor. Harold, is the coffee all right? Mm-mm. You mean it's as bad as yesterday? Mm-hmm. No improvement at all? Mm-mm. Harold, don't just shake your head. You've got to tell me what's wrong with the coffee. Bad taste. Now what am I going to do? Oh, Mary, hi. Hello, Jane. Well, listen, help me out, will you? Harold hates my coffee. What kind do you use? Instant Folgers. Instant Folgers? Tastes good as fresh perked. Good as fresh perked? I'll try it. Jean, this coffee is delicious. Do you know that? Mm-hmm. It's not the same kind we've been using, is it? Mm-hmm. Don't just shake your head. Explain why the coffee's so good. Good taste. Tastes good as fresh perked. Instant Folgers. Harvey, want anything special for your birthday? Just a decent cup of coffee. You're kidding. I'm serious. Honey, your coffee's undrinkable. It's pretty harsh. Well, so's your coffee. You know, the girls down at the office make better coffee on their hot plates. Well, see you later. And he didn't even kiss me goodbye. You know, if I could just make a decent cup of coffee, I could relax. So, relax. Why don't you try instant Folgers? Tastes good as fresh perked. Good as fresh perked? I'll surprise Harvey for his birthday tonight. Hey, great coffee. It's instant Folgers. Doesn't it taste good as fresh perked? Better. Better than those girls make at the office. Honey, their coffee can't hold a candle to yours. Instant Folgers taste good as fresh perked. Try it. I told you the PTA's coming tonight, George. I'm too busy for nonsense. PTA, huh? Uh, gonna serve your coffee? If you joke about my coffee again, you hear him, Mrs. Olson? Like a broken record. <laughs> well, it's one committee member to another. Maybe you should try Folgers coffee. Why Folgers? They blend it special. Folgers uses mountain-grown coffee. Mountain-grown? Yeah, that's the richest kind. Bet your husband tastes the difference. Mrs. Olson, I'll try Folgers on him tonight. How about another cup, honey? You second on my coffee? Tastes kind of great tonight. See? No trick to making coffee. All you need is a better coffee. Folgers. Try Folgers, the mountain-grown coffee. Mountain-grown for better flavor. From the most abundant plantations of the coffee countries. From the choicest of the coffee trees there. A whole new blend of the world's finest coffees. The new Sanka coffee. Make some sometime soon. Make it any strength you like. The point is, the richness straight from those coffee plantations always cuts through, reaches back, and discovers taste buds you possibly never even knew you had. Fix it any way you like your coffee to be fixed. You just can't cover up this pure coffee goodness. Have another cup. Remarkably, this new Sanka coffee is still 97% caffeine-free. You'll find the new Sanka coffee at your store in this big new 8-ounce size and this nice-to-hold new jar. Hold it soon.
healthy house is a great idea for kids. You know, a place of our own without a lot of parents peering down our backs. house and asked me if it'd be all right if he used a little portion of the basement to uh, have a place of his own and he had an open house and he had about 30 kids out and it was so successful that he decided he'd like to have a little bigger and he asked if he could have about six more feet of our basement and then he took another six feet and finally wound up that we decided that we ought to make it a little more permanent uh, having a coffee house in their home helps keep the uh, teenagers off the street. It gives them something to do and they, uh, something to, uh, an out, outlet for their uh, energies. So they got working, he and his dad, and got it all fixed up. But then it came to bringing in some furniture and he brought all the old chairs he could find and his boyfriends brought in old things. And I didn't go along with that at all. I thought we should go around to second-hand stores and get some four chairs that were alike and paint them a nice color, but no, he didn't want that. Well, we serve coffee for our purpose. The Part of the general theme of a coffee house and what everybody associates with coffee is, is coffee itself. I realize when uh, people think of coffee houses right away, they think of beatnecks and anything that's linked with them. But uh, what we're trying to show is a where kids can get together, really something uh, unique and inspiring, I think, about a coffee house. You know, we have three basement coffee houses in Racine. There's the pit, of course, and the ship's wheel, and then there's the provincial club. House, you associate with people more. You get to know who they are and find out more about them. And you understand more. A place to get together with kids, uh, a few laughs, listen to some good music, and a different atmosphere all together. I think we're leaving a good pattern for other kids, other students at the high schools that would like to uh, do the same thing. University is a very modern college. Well, we even have our own coffee house, Chumley's. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Chumley's. Tonight I'd like to present for your listening enjoyment the essential noise. Anybody can find something that they like in Chumley's. The variety of things that happen here between the folk music and the chamber concerts and the poetry readings 
is enough that it can fit into anybody's plan. They tend to attract a rather circumscribed clientele. There are a group of cool people on campus, not meaning it derogatorily, but just people who consider themselves swinging. And if you consider yourself swinging, well, you just have to go to the coffee house for one reason or another. It's the place to be and the place to be seen. The money, I mean, the coffee shop was originally founded by the school and was, was organized by the school and the original money was put up by the school. And they have more or less subsidized us and helped renovated it and kept it in the shape it's in up till now. While it's completely on the initiative of the student council and the students to uh, create the environment, we in the dean's office are very encouraging this activity. Close to three to 400 students uh, enjoy and participate and express themselves through this medium of their talent and of their need to communicate significantly to one another and perhaps even to the world at large. It's a, it's a middle class image or an intellectual, uh, 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 totally intellectual, high intellectual um, sanction against stereotypes. You know, this is bad, bad, bad. But I mean, how else do you choose your friends? You choose your friends because I don't, there are certain things that are true. Well, I don't think it's so much, I think we're using this word stereotype yeah, too much. It's not yeah. really the right word. I think it's more of a, this role playing <laughs> bit, you know? Yeah, the sense right, of, yeah. the sense if the sign which prophesies and the end which brings joy are separate, it is because somewhere we stopped listening to our heartbeat and started on the clock. Taurus Bulba on his deathbed. I have lain with slow dreams and asked, of what love? Behind the door, the grove obscures the fallen star. And of the angel of night, who may speak? Can you but know? because it provides a relatively somber atmosphere for talking about the serious concerns of the day, such as life, love, God, and Vietnam. About a year and a half ago, we started the coffee house, and uh, it grew naturally from using entertainment on Sunday evening, and then uh, it became a coffee house on Friday evening for the adults of the church, and uh, uh, a desire on my part to uh, speak to the community and to involve the community uh, in some kind of dialogue or communication. Twice a month, every second and fourth Friday evening, we transform our social hall into an actual coffee house setting with small tables and uh, circles of chairs and a spotlight on the entertainment. And then high school girls serve the refreshments, coffee and uh, chips and pretzels and so forth. We'd like to do a really big number for you right now. It's a very beautiful thing entitled Teenage Teen. As you can tell by the title, it's a protest song. One, two, three, four. Well, I'm a teenage teen and I'm in my teens. I'm a teenage teen and I'm really mean. I'm a teenage teen and I'm quite obscene. You better watch out what you're saying. Teenage teen. Oh, 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 oh. a ding dong. I got a girl, she's truly fine. I really love that baby of mine. I love her now and I always will. Cause we both use clear ourselves. Too often, church-sponsored activities simply try to bring people in in order to convert them into the church, and usually it doesn't work. Once people find out about it, they don't come back because it's pretty hard to change people's ideas that, that quickly. But the Reverend Coffee House isn't this sort of an organization. It's simply run as a coffee house. And since people realize this, they don't hesitate to come back and enjoy themselves time after time. I truly think that if the 
church is going to get out into the world and make a better place of it, especially for the youth, that they're going to have to offer something to the youth on their own level. I think this is the only way a church can continue. And I believe that what we have here is an excellent beginning. Well, there's not too many places in Glendale for teenagers to go. And so I come here because it has very good entertainment. To tell the truth, I really didn't think it was going to be a success. But when I first came, I realized that it was going to be real good, a real good place for kids to come. The idea of a coffee house in a church is kind of strange, but it's really worked out very well. I think that the Brethren Coffee House is a great place to go. Swing down, swing down. Why don't you swing down, chair, stop and let me ride? Swing down, chair, stop and let me ride. Rock me low, rock me low, come and easy. I got a home on the other side. Let me ride. I've been amazed at the response to the Brethren Coffee House here at Glendale. The interest has been uh, overwhelming from people uh, across the country, from churches and other groups as well. And so the coffee house idea and the folk singing is in keeping with the times and does speak to life in a very meaningful way. The Y Coffee House started because a group of students at a YMCA conference who were students at Wright Junior College uh, expressed a need for a place to uh, meet, to uh, have conversation, to discuss things that were bothering them, uh, some of their concerns about life and its purpose. They also wanted a place to express their own creativity. They came to the YMCA with the request that some help be given, and uh, we got together with them, and the end result is this, the Y Coffee House. in an age of questioning. They're looking for answers, and uh, the people in the home maybe aren't interested in your concerns as much as your fellow students would be. This situation offers a possibility of looking at these problems with other students and with faculty members over a coffee. We have two staff people here, but this place is run by students. They make the major decisions, they formulate the policy. This gives them a, a meaningful experience in life. It's not a make-believe situation, it's for real. We get together and sing and talk and learn. It's, it makes doing things easy. And with the drama and folk singing and poetry on the walls, <laughs> most of us have never written anything, but we, some do try and some find out they've got a talent for some things. Most of the time in this coffee house, we uh, work for freedom. We don't plan our program during the week in the daytimes. We leave it free for the students to come in uh, to express themselves, to uh, 
uh, oh, possibly get up and read some poetry, or to start a debate, or to dance, play chess, play cards. Now, we do have some structured programs. We have live drama here every Saturday and Sunday evening uh, with an 8.30 curtain. We do many current plays from uh, musicals to current dramas to Greek tragedies. We also, on Friday nights, have professional musicians in here and have a professional folk music evening with three shows. On Thursday nights, we have jazz concerts. And then the rest of the week is um, spent with uh, just whatever might happen that's interesting that people want to get involved in. seems to be a big trend toward non-involvement and uh, in a place like this it's pretty hard not to get involved. I've traveled this wide world all over now to another I go You can come in here, meet new friends, talk to old friends, and play cards, just sit around and talk or just do absolutely nothing. It's good for studying if you have something to read and you want to be a little bit alone. When, when you start a song professionally, you should end it professionally. In the middle of the song, you're all slacking. And another thing, you're supposed to be moving back and forth. This is a very happy occasion, not a funeral. Al? I'm listening. All right, it's a, it's a very important occasion. It's not a funeral. It's got to be done right from the beginning, and it has to end right. Now, we'll try it once more and see what happens. All right. Once more. Okay. Shirley? From the top. It's marvelous for young people because it's a bit of life that's real and it's theirs. Chestnut Hill is a suburb of Philadelphia, and like any other town or city, we have teenagers. And about a year ago, the heads of the schools in the area got together and decided that it would be a good thing if there was a facility for these kids where they could gather and, and have some fun. So they went to the Chestnut Hill Community Association, who was very sympathetic to this idea. And the Community Association, about a year ago, oh, maybe a little less than a year ago, about June, uh, appointed Mr. Mel Ehrlich, who is our, presently our director, to see if he could get together with some kids and find out what they wanted. So he got a group of about 20 kids together and they met all summer and they discussed what they wanted and decided that what they needed was a, an area where they could meet as a club. We were very fortunate in finding about oh, a little over 1,000 square feet, which we have rented uh, and we found this about a month before Christmas. And that's when the fun started.
kids have formed their own committee, and they meet as necessary to solve the various problems that they all have. All right, the uh, next order of business is the um, organizing of a cleanup committee for tonight. Okay, uh, I think uh, Joe Wollston, <laughs> since he's not here. <laughs> Why not? Okay, Joe, Joe Wollston can head up the committee. While you're talking about the cleanup committee, uh, the trash goes out Thursday night. Where do you put the trash cans after you're finished with them? I mean, how are you supposed to put them out? Well, we put them on the sidewalk. Right. Justin's going to help hey, out Willie. tonight, aren't you? Yeah. Do you have yeah. the, um, all really the stuff for cleanup? Oh, Justin, come on, I'm doing it. First of all, do we have supplies? Well, a good many details have had to be gone into and uh, a lot of problems solved, but we think we're pretty well on the way to having them all solved now. <laughs> L for entertainment for tonight, volume two. coffee house for teenagers is a, a tremendously uh, constructive thing for these kids because it's not only a facility where they can go socially, it's going to provide a place uh, for uh, a teenage employment center. And I think it's, it's very good for the kids uh, because it, 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 it gives them a place where they can go and uh, use their energies constructively instead of uh, uh, milling around with no particular purpose. Happening in this old town They roll up the streets When the sun goes down Oh, but what we need I'm a tell you true Is a coffee house rendezvous I can ride to the drive-in Or polish my chrome Or watch television With the old folks at home Oh, but what we need I'm a tell you true Is a coffee house rendezvous Gonna find us a swing too loud, but there's always a place for me and you at the coffee house rendezvous. We've got the action, we've got the swing too loud, but there's always a place for me and you at the coffee house rendezvous, the coffee house rendezvous. 